May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts be about acceptable unto you, God, our strength and our deliverer. Amen. Amen. I just want to start by uh, giving you kind of a time map uh, of where we are. We are in the season of Easter, which lasts for 50 days, from Easter Sunday to the day of Pentecost, 50 days. And um, on the 40th of these days, it always falls on a Thursday with the Ascension Day. Uh, we don't have it as a national holiday anymore, but actually that day still stands. Today we are on what on what I might call the eighth day of Easter, counting from last Sunday. Um, and so we still have 32 days to go until we get to Ascension and 42 days to Pentecost. Now you will understand why I'm giving you this time map, but uh, let me just unpack it one step at a time. Today's gospel reading actually happens on two days in the timeline of the story of Pentecost from Easter, uh, the day of the resurrection, to Pentecost. What's happening is when Jesus first appears to his disciples and says, peace be with you, twice, that is three days uh, after uh, Monday, Thursday, and so the first day of Easter, and then the same gospel reading takes us forward. You remember it says at one point, but Thomas was not with them, and then he arrives later. So we're looking at, as it were, two days uh, in the storyline, uh, and that is quite important. And the, uh, the first reading from Acts, in a sense, takes us to the 50th day, but that's, because, that's Pentecost, the day of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came upon um, the all in all of what we call the church now, but there is something that points forward to that in today's reading. So if you keep that in mind, uh, then uh, my homily will make sense to you a bit better than it would have. So here we are today uh, with the disciples in the upper room, afraid, really afraid. And so they find themselves in a situation that is not perhaps that different from the world that we live in. You know what we see in the news, bodies found in prison cells, burnt, or people being trafficked, there's violence, uh, there's a lot of lying, there's a lot of selling of people, a lot of human trafficking, just a fearful and uh, worry-inspiring world that we live in. So here are the disciples, three days after they've been with Jesus, probably in the same room where Jesus said to them, love one another as I've loved you, where Jesus probably washed their feet and Jesus instituted uh, the Last Supper, Holy Communion, which we celebrate quite a lot in the church. So just imagine that room. There he was with them on Monday, Thursday. And remember that on Monday, Thursday, uh, what Jesus did was different from what, let me say, let me just speak for myself, what I would have done on that day. If I knew that tomorrow I was going to die, and I had people that I've been, I've been teaching for three years, I'll do one of two things, if not both of them. I tried to give them a nice summary of this bachelor's degree on semiology. <laughs> so that after I'm dead and gone, they'll remember what I've been teaching them. If not that, I'll go out and party like mad because I'll never ever have this opportunity in my life. While in the background, I'll be worried that I'll be gone. On Monday, Thursday, that's not what Jesus does. What Jesus does on that day, he doesn't give them a summary of the three years that he spent with them. Well, he does, but not like lessons, um, <laughs> point one, point 0.59, no. What he does is he instructs them to love one another as he has loved them. He gives them that mandate to carry that out. Uh, and then he washes their feet as an example of what they need to do, serving one another, and then he gives them a meal. So basically what Jesus does is he doesn't go back and tell them, you remember this day this happened and that happened, and he points forward. That's what he did on Monday Thursday. On this day when they're in the upper room, in that room that is locked, uh, after Jesus rose, I don't know what you feel like, you know, you, you just witnessed somebody 
who, who died probably attended something of their funeral and here they are with you in the room. Um, I don't know about you, I would scream. I, that would just shock me, I'd probably pass out. So the first Easter was probably not like what we naturally want to imagine. I mean, we've had 2,000 years to get used to this news. This was the first time that humanity might say had experiences, and this must have been very shocking. So here's Jesus who comes and stands in their midst. And what he does is that he continues what he did on Monday Thursday. He doesn't talk much about the past. The first thing that he does is he greets them with a greeting of peace. And as it were, a peace that they should go and spread it in this fear-filled world where people are killed, where people are worried and afraid for themselves, where people are sold. Uh, and when I say people are sold, remember that uh, Judas basically got into a deal where he actually sold a human being, the most human of human beings, Jesus Christ himself, and so engaged in something of a uh, you know, what slave traders and human traffickers would do. We still are dealing with it. There's this, if you wish, you can say Judas is a patron saint of all human traffickers. Uh, we still live in that world. And he says, peace be with you. As a father sent me, I sent you. Now that's a powerful one. Without any benefits from the refresher course on, oh, what did you do in Galilee, Capernaum, uh, Sea of Galilee? I mean, you go out, in this world that knows no peace and confront it with peace. Now, doesn't only say that once, he greets them with the greeting of peace again. Peace be with you a second time. Whoever sins, you shall forgive, they'll be forgiven them. And whoever sins, you shall retain, they'll be retained. Now, uh, as a priest and fellow priest will tell you this, when you're ordained, the day you're ordained, Bishop comes and anoints your hands with prism wire, and this is one of the most kind of <clears throat> lines that the bishop will say. Whoever sins, you forgive will be forgiven. Whoever sins, you shall retain and be retained. Now that sounds like a heavy thing, doesn't it? Um, so I have to decide when somebody does something and they walk into the confessional. Do I forgive or don't I forgive? But we generally pronounce forgiveness for our Lord on the cross and forgive them for the Lord of what they're doing. So the point I want to go to is this. Not only does he send them out as the Father sent him with a message of peace, confrontational peace, because the world is violent, uh, he sends them out also with a message of forgiveness in a world that knows revenge. So not only is it a world of violence, those who are violent, they want, to, they want vengeance, and so cross, swords cross all the time. The perpetrators and victims, and the war goes on, and it just keeps going on. So he sends them out with this actually very confrontational message given the state of the world. He doesn't say, I send you out with peace, and where there's violence, go and hide in a corner in your room, and says, Go out there and make peace happen. Uh, sometimes we talk about accepting reality. Uh, accept the reality and live within its contingencies and what it allows and what it doesn't allow. Jesus seems to be saying here, yeah, do more than accepting reality. Confront it with change. Move it in your own little way into what God wants reality to be like. So what we see as permanent as an immovable sorry state, the violent state of humanity of the world, Jesus says, look at it as changeable into the peace of God. So it's not a peace that avoids, but a peace that confronts. And that is the peace that Jesus lived by. That is a peace that ended up with him crucified. That is a peace with which he rose from the dead. And that is a peace that he passes on to his disciples. That is a peace that he sends and he starts us with today, for we are his disciples. It's a cheeky piece. So on the first Sunday, there we are. He says, Peace be with you twice. So Father sent me, I sent you. Peace be with you. Forgive, you'll be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. 
Thomas was not with them. There's 10 petrified, 80 something year old men. And Jesus gives them this. And he breathes with the Holy Spirit on them. Even before the 42 days later of Pentecost. And then, next Sunday, similar to this one, Thomas was not with them. He says, I will not believe any of this until I know the story. And Jesus walks in, even though the doors are shut, nobody knows how. And what he says to Thomas is, check me out. Check my hands, check my feet, check my side. And he says, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my Lord. Remember, he's our patron saint. The first to actually link this person that he sees to the deity. My Lord and my God. Not the original OMG. Original, oh my God, that was St. Thomas. So that's it. And he says, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. That is us. We haven't had the opportunity to check that out. But you should live in that moment of my Lord and my God. OMG, the world is not as lost as it is. Going down, but God loves it. And he wants us to join him in telling it around. So that's where we are now. We are here reading about the disciples who are petrified. As humanity might be petrified, we really think about where the world is and where it's going. Christ comes and he says, Peace be with you. I send you out as the Father has sent me. Peace be with you. You have the Holy Spirit to walk with you. Now, if you read, you listen to that first reading today from Acts. Without the benefit of the research of fresh course, without the benefit of, I told you this and that, in the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter preaches his first ever sermon. He preaches his first sermon with a courage that nobody knows where it comes from, it comes from the Spirit. But anyway, he preaches his first sermon. And that can happen of us express the message of Christ, and Christ who is risen, who the world wanted to defeat, but who loved the world so much that he was raised from the dead, and this, the message continues. And I think that this is important to us at St. Thomas. St. Thomas was late to the news, but when he caught the fire, it never stopped. He arrived eight days later. Does it matter that you are right 500 years later, 2,000 years later? I don't think it matters. But the message of the risen Lord captures you, if you want to put it that way. You learn the way of confrontation and peace, of a forgiveness that wants to turn things around, of an attitude that says the world is a mess, but that's not its last stop. This is the message of Christ. Are we ready for it? Are we ready for this game? Amen.